In today's lesson, we are going to learn how to change between fractions, percentages and decimals. We will have been successful if we can convert between fractions, percentages and decimals. So, I like to use this diagram to help me convert between fractions, decimals and percentages, so I'll explain it to you. If we want to go from a fraction to a decimal, for example, 3 over 5, what we need to do is we need to divide the top number by the bottom number. So in this example, I need to do 3 divided by 5. And this will get me 0 0.6. So to go from a fraction to a decimal, I divide the top by the bottom. If I want to go from a, a decimal sorry, to a percentage, I need to multiply by 100. So in this case, I'll be taking 0 0.6 and I will be times and by 100 which gives me 60%. If I want to get from a percentage back to a fraction, I put that percentage over 100 and simplify. So 60 over 100, because that's what percent means per 100. And if I divide top and bottom by 20, I get back to 3 over 5. Okay, so this is a cycle we need to go through. However, we can go back the way at one step. If we want to go back from a percentage to a decimal, we can just divide by 100, okay? But apart from that, we need to follow this circle round. So let's look at our first example. Change the following into a fraction and a decimal. So using my little diagram, I can see that going from a percentage to a fraction, I need to put over 100 and simplify. So to get to a fraction, I'm going to do 80 over 100. I look for the biggest number that goes into 80 and 100, that is 20. So I divide top and bottom by 20 and I get 4 over 5. Okay, so that is 80% as a fraction. Then if I want to go from a percentage to a decimal, I just divide it by 100. So I take 80 and I divide by 100 to give me 0 0.8. So 80%, 4 over 5 and 0 0.8 are all effectively the same number, just represented in different forms. Example 2, change the following into a fraction and a decimal. So firstly, 19 over 100. Now, you can use your calculator to check. If you have a Casio calculator, you can use your fraction button and it'll simplify your fraction for you. But if you know that 19 is a prime number, that means that no other numbers other than 1 and 19 can go into it. So we can't simplify this down at all. So that is it as a fraction in its simplest form. Then if I want to go from a percentage to a decimal, I divide by 100 to get me 0 0.19. And remember, we learned how to do this without a calculator. You just move the decimal point back two places. For C, change the following into a fraction and a decimal. 72 over 100. You can do this in a calculator to simplify that if you want. Or you can spot that 72 is a multiple of 2. It is even. So you could divide down by 2 first to get 36 over 50. You can see that again, these are both even numbers. So let's divide down by two again. And you can see that this is us finished here. So next we want to change that into a decimal. So we take the 72 and we divide by 100 get 0.72. So like I said, for the fraction, you can do the 72 over 100 in your calculator, but it is good practice to do it in your calculator if you can. And our last one here is a little bit different because we have a decimal and a percentage, okay? So I'm still going to put it over 100. And again, if you pop this in your calculator, it will simplify it for you. If you had to try and do this non-calculator, what we usually do with a 0 0.5 is we would multiply by 2 first to get rid of that decimal. So I would take it back to whole numbers by doubling everything, which would give me 35 over 200. And then I can see that these are both in the 5 times table. So that is going to give me 7 over 40. But again, you can use your calculator to do that. 17.5 divide by 100 
is going to give me 0 0.175 as a decimal. Okay, example two, change the following fraction into a percentage. So you can see from our diagram that if we want to go from a fraction to a percentage, we can't go back against this arrow, okay? We need to follow the cycle round, so we need to take it to a decimal, then a percentage. So firstly, I'm going to divide the top number by the bottom number. So first things first, I'm going to do 5 divided by 8, which gives me 0 0.625. Then to get that to a percentage, I'm going to times it by 100, which is going to get me 62.5%. Remember, we can do that part without a calculator by moving the decimal point two places to the right. You can do all this in one step, so you can merge that into divide the top by the bottom and multiply by 100, and that will get you there as well. So you don't need to do it in two separate steps if you don't want to. Okay, B, we've got 2 divided by 5, so I'm just going to do all of this in the one step. I'm going to divide the top by the bottom, and I'm going to multiply by 100, because it doesn't ask for the decimal, so I don't need to show the decimal. And that is going to give me 40%. Okay, and for C, I'm going to do it all in the one step again. 17 divided by 20 times by 100 equals 85%. Okay, example three. Jack scored 70 out of 92 in his English test, 56 out of 70 in his French test, and 39 out of 50 in his history test. Change each mark to a percentage. Okay, so we can see as fractions, we can't really decide which one is best here because they're all out of different numbers. So what I'm going to have to do is change the amount of percentages so we can compare. So I'm going to divide the top by the bottom and times by 100 for the first one, which gives me, if I round that to zero decimal places, that gives me 76%. For his French, that is 56 divided by 70 times 100. which gives me 80%, and I've got 39 divided by 50 times 100, which gives me 78%. And which subject did he score the highest mark? So if we look at our answers previously, we can see that it was in his French test it got the highest mark. That was more difficult to see, before we change them into percentages, which is why we did that. So the answer to this one is French. And in part C, in which subject did he score the lowest mark? So if we look at our marks again, we can see that in his English test he did. So we can just answer this one and say English. Okay, example four, put the following list in order starting with the smallest first. Now, this is difficult to see which one's the biggest and which one's the smallest out of all of these because one's a decimal, one's a fraction and the other is a percentage. What we would like to do here is put them all into the one form and it could really be any form but fractions tend to be the hardest to see which one is biggest so you would either want to put it into decimal form or percentage form. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put them all in percentage form. So to take my decimal to a percentage, I'm going to follow the diagram and I'm going to multiply by 100, which gives me 50%. To put my fraction to a percentage, I need to divide the top by the bottom, then multiply by 100, which is going to give me 80%. And I've already got the 45%. So starting with the smallest then, we have 45%. The next smallest is 0 0.5 and our largest is 40 over 50. Okay guys, that is all for today. Please go on to Teams and check the work that you have been given. Make sure you ask for help if you need it. Bye.